We have 30 million hectares of degraded pasture land in Brazil alone. That's an area the size of Belgium. And, oh look, there's a big bullet ant. You guys seen these before? Here you go. Don't get stung by one of those. Uh, my name is Lucy Dablin. I'm a PhD candidate at the Royal Botanic Gardens of Kew. Last February, I started working for Kew in Bolivia, in Cobija and Pando in the north, implementing agroforestry systems. We had three species growing in a degraded cattle pasture, and then the landowner took the fence down and the cows ate all of the trees that we've been collecting data on for the last two years. So obviously that was really shocking and horrible. Um, and then about a month later, I saw that the trees had all started to regrow. They'd survived the browsing. And that's when I decided to go away and really investigate the potential for integrating trees into the cattle pastures in the Amazon. Conservations, I think for me is, is what I used to be. I think I used to be a conservationist. And for me that meant I want to conserve this wonderful forest so that I can enjoy it and I can enjoy the benefits the, you know, the forest provides. The world can enjoy the benefits uh, that this forest provides, but I'm not jeopardising it. And, uh, and I believe that we have to conserve this way of being. I realise that's not a particularly sustainable, transferable model. I believe what I'm doing here is, is uh, rehabilitation agriculture because I want to take degraded lands and I want to bring them back into productivity. And yes, it's never going to be a primary forest again, but at least a hectare of primary forest somewhere else may not be deforested because we can increase the productivity of one area. I chose to work on this piece of land because historically it was a cattle pasture. It's been a cattle pasture for 30 years. Um, so the soil here became very degraded and very compacted. And then after the cows, they had 10 years of regrowth where the lamb was just left to regrow. And obviously it regrew a majority of the species that the cows had been eating, such as the waba and a lot of these vines. And so it resulted in a really thick, impenetrable secondary forest. I have now cleared four hectares. It's been good. A lot of machete work, a lot of chainsaw work. Um, I'm using mainly local staff and now I've got some international volunteers who have come in to help me, which is really cool. So they're kind of the motivating force behind the project now. They're out there doing all the work. <laughs> and we're just trying to prepare the site at the minute. So we're trying to clear enough space to be able to plant thousands of trees, um, but at the same time trying to grow the thousands of trees as well. So I currently have 10,000 trees in my nursery, and I'm hoping to double that. Um, and really I'm just looking at five key species uh, that I've identified as having a particular potential. Either they're ones that have been reported to be palatable to cattle, but no one really knows enough about them, um, or they're totally new and no one's ever tried them. So I'm using at the minute four native species and one non-native species. The four native species include um, Brossum malacastrum, Inga edulis, Lucaena, Luca alpha. I don't know how to say the names and the Latin names properly because I only read them. So I'm using Lucaena, <laughs> um, the sabre, the kapok tree, and a species of acacia, and an erythrina. Uh, silver pastoral systems in general have a, have a huge potential, not just for um, feeding the cows and maintaining the, the grass there for a lot longer and preventing the soil erosion and decompacting the soil. They can also provide other benefits in terms of food or fruits or medicine um, and timber. But at the minute in the Amazon it's one cow per hectare and in the rest of the world it's like three or four cows per hectare. So there's a real, it's a real gap here in livestock production and there's a great opportunity in, in improving that, not just for the, the beef and dairy industry but also for the provision of the ecosystem services that the Amazon rainforest provides and for those of us in the world who are dependent on them for our oxygen or our water. I'm not trying to do any particularly complicated science here. Um, everything I'm doing I'm doing in a way that can be very easily replicated at the farm level. So for example, the bags of soil, I'm not making like an exotic mix of compost. I'm just using the top five centimetres of the soil. I'm not using root trainers, which are very expensive. All of the seeds I've just collected from trees in town. I'm just trying to use what's easily available here. 
and just try and create something that's very easily replicable and cheap. I think conservation is a very political term now. I think I prefer sustainable development over the word conservation. Yeah, for, for me and what I'm doing. But obviously there is that part in all of us that wants there to be a beautiful forest full of wild things that we can come and look at, you know, and that our children can come and look at at some point. Um, otherwise, you know, we really are just trashing the world, aren't we?